Hello, welcome to another video where I'm going to look at uh, another one of the hip mobility drills and how it relates to a functional movement. This time I'm going to use running. It's probably not the best video, this one, with, in terms of running in a straight line. Probably uh, more agility running, I suppose, you could maybe relate to. It's definitely hurdling, but just to give you an example of how this is a useful drill, though, to, especially for getting full knee flexion as you would need in sprinting. So this is where it does relate to a lot more sprinting, more so than distance running. So... I'm going to, Dylan on the right is doing the drill and Nathan on the left is doing the sprinting. So just sort of play it for you and then we'll rewind it. And you'll see Dylan, Nathan's moving quite quickly there. So if we just bring it back to here. All right, so when he's in this stance phase and because he's sprinting hard, he wants, to, he wants to generate more power and obviously a bigger stride length. So the, everyone knows that you need a fair bit of hip flexion to, to do that. So... So without the hip flexion, if there's a problem there, and it could be many reasons for it, um, you know, but generally speaking, if you go into a posterior tilt here, you're going to have a loss of the ability for the hip to sit in the socket there. So instead of it sitting right in the socket, like so, it's it's sort of moved, the femur is sort of moving forward and it's going to pinch into the groin, all right? So you're going to, instead, it's, it's moved forward and up, all right? That's the classic hip impingement. So... Um, so obviously there's a lot of things move, happening here. In this drill that Dylan's doing to the right, um, if we just sort of play that for a second and you'll see what I mean. Hang on. So you'll see when we play this that he's trying to sort of take that foot and bring it over the, over the box. And see there, that point there, this is where the, his hip is really challenged here to try and stay in the socket. If it moves up and out, he's going to get this pinching feeling and his body mate will probably sway out to the right to try and make room for it. thing that you've got to consider here is the stance leg. So the glute medius here on this side is working really hard. It's where it's partially a stability drill, not just purely mobility. All right, and you'll sort of see when, it, when I keep going with that, how he actually falls over for a bit, falls over a couple of times, you know, just there, see that? And then... But he's trying to sort of, like, have the box at a height that he's got to clear it, so he needs a fair bit of mobility but he's controlling it. So whereas in the sprinting with Nathan, it's not controlled. If I just play it really slow, because it's so fast, it's uncontrolled. All right. So as he's moving, um, it's really difficult to sort of work on these things. And any compensation will be a big compensation. And will end up with pain. All right. So as you're, as Dylan's trying to sort of move that that leg, it's it's great sort of a drill to work between between the sets of your sprinting or even any exercise that's requiring that full flexion, especially with lateral and multi-directional movement. That's why it's great for sports. But it can be also a useful drill for anyone who doesn't play sports, maybe had hip injuries and now is rehabilitated and wants to maintain their mobility, not let it stiffen up again. And this is a, a great way to sort of use this exercise and it has more functional carryover than a... Than a um, than what you would see with just a static stretch or even just say a static exercise like a hip extension or even a deadlift for that matter. Great exercises, but they will not change the mobility timing and structure of how it's meant to move. Where Dylan's got that really good control um, that he can sort of like uh, uh, program it to work in the way that he wants it to and really work on that mobility and taking it into that extreme range, especially when it's abducted. And at the same time, like I said before, is really working on that mobility of the, of the stability of the stance leg. And that's many times where we see things breaking down. So, you know, like really having to control all of the things around there. So the core, the glute medius on this side, and obviously the, the mobility on this side, on the other side, and vice versa, and working around. All right, so that's a great example of how to use the standing um, hip abduction leg swings. Um, I'm not sure of the actual name of it, but it sounds good to me. But yeah, if you want to use that in your tra again, I wouldn't use it if you've got hip pain. I would use it towards the end of your thing, or if you don't want to get hip pain, you want to maintain mobility, especially if you do play sports. All right, so that's how you, we would use that drill, and um, yeah, and you put it together with all the other things, and you'll have a, the perfect plan. All right, so I hope you enjoy that. We'll see you in our next video.